Zach Robinson and Leo Birenberg are the composers of Cobra Kai. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I wanted to start by asking you guys, and we'll ask, kick things off with Zach. What is the most important thing to get right with the music on Cobra Kai? It's a good question. Um, I think we talk about this a lot, that the story for Cobra Kai doesn't work unless you go as big as possible with the music. And that's kind of our uh, thesis statement is it's always like, how big can we get um, before someone tells us it's too big? And that never happens. So (laughs) we uh, are often, you know, we're in season four, we're scoring a a karate tournament in the Valley. um, And uh, we're scoring it as if it is a gladiator match. and the meets stakes the in Super Bowl, higher. right? And it's life, it's life and death, um, and that's how we approach it. So I think, like we, we just really, uh, it all comes from a place of love, of course, and it's never making fun of what's happening on screen, but it's uh, going, going big and and going hard, as we like to say, uh, is is really we do it so that it allows the audience to like kind of believe like all the things that are happening it's giving it's giving the audience permission to um to really say like okay like i i believe that these people are fighting to death via karate in the valley if i may launch off of what zach said like there's a fine line that we are always trying to keep in mind when when you're going as big as possible and you have something as potentially ridiculous as possible as like you know middle-aged men fighting karate uh you don't want it to make it you don't want to make it feel like a parody. And and sometimes when you're going really big, that is always a risk. And so Zach and I are constantly tossing around the word sincerity when we're scoring because we want it to feel not just that like it's a joke by being so big, but in that in fact, like these feelings in drama is genuinely real. It comes from a place of, of sincerity. Mm. And with the sh- with the show that like adds to the world of the karate kid films from the 80s is that like helpful because it gives you a blue ma- a, like a blueprint as to what the music should feel and sound like or is it sort of a bit restricting and limiting in terms of um like sort of you sort of boxed in a bit what do you think leah it's a good question and no one's ever framed it quite that way before which i like back when we were working on season one it was a very helpful sort of i would say launch pad in terms of setting up the kind of dualistic that ended up being a bit of like a triangle in terms of our sounds um you know you've got the cobra kai legacy and you've got the miyagi do legacy and I would say part of the Miyagi-Do legacy was really established in those Karate Kid films, just in terms of the kind of spirituality of the score, some of the instrumentation and the way it uses pan flutes, you know, very famously, and just the sort of Hollywood orchestral sound um, in there. We sort of created the Cobra Kai sound out of Johnny's legacy and love of hair metal and all things badass in the 80s. And we're influenced a lot by music from the 80s, not necessarily the score to the Karate Kid in the 80s. And that was kind of our starting point back in season one. And we realized we needed kind of a third sound world to establish the younger generation in the show, which is so integral to the story. Um, And we kind of reinvented this 80s sound in a sort of retro leaning synth pop electronica vibe for for the younger generation and that you know is very informed by the 80s but feels contemporary especially since like the 80s are so popular right now as a musical influence yeah zach uh he he said it all really i think now (laughs) now it's all now it's all kind of Season yeah. four, um, it's all kind of in the wash, right? Like every yeah. everything is, it's not as clear cut as it was in season one. And like now everything, the stakes are so high for everything and and the characters interact 
you know, a bunch of characters in season four never met in season one. So we're just constantly kind of like blending those, all those influences. Now everyone is changing teams all the time, yeah. which also like makes for some fun in terms of swapping around yes. the instrumentation and just how we develop stuff. And that, that always just provides like a lot of fuel for us to develop. I would say like, yeah, that stuff was a good launch pad back in the first season. And now the score just sounds like the Cobra Kai score and right. which to me sounds extremely unique. Like I can't like, there's no, there's kind of nothing that has this insane blend of stuff. And so that is the, all the fuel we need to keep it going. Zach, is there like sort of different, like do you have different themes, different soundscapes for the different dojos? Um, and if so, uh, when sort of, Cobra Fang, um, Eagle Fang, sorry, when Eagle Fang was introduced, did you have to like think of a third sort of like theme or soundscape to bring it to the Yeah, next? we 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 kind of, as Leo said, like we had kind of the Johnny sound, the 80s hair metal type thing um, for the original Cobra Kai. Miyagi-Do was kind of based in that like Bill Conti tradition of, of you know, what the Karate Kid soundtrack sounded like. And, and now like season four was super fun because when we, blended them there were often times where you would hear uh you know daniel's theme or the Miyagi or mr miyagi's kind of theme that we have played on an electric guitar for example uh, or you'd hear johnny's theme on like a pan flute um or a shakuhachi or or something like that just having fun and like playing with those with the blend uh of the instruments and the styles was was one of our highlights for season four yeah, so like, so are the themes like you guys think like more associated with the characters like Johnny and Daniel rather than the actual dojos? So like, there, you know what? There's themes for for like everything. There are characters. Yeah. <laughs> some themes are for characters. Some themes are for dojos. Some themes are for like relationships between mm -hmm. some characters or some some characters and just their relationships with everybody. Some themes are much more abstract in kind of how they were born. Uh, it, it's more about like the karate philosophy behind them. You know, like we have a couple different shades of like Miyagi-Do thematically, like some that has to do with like Daniel's memories of Mr. Miyagi, some that has to do with like kind of the more uh, true like training and like karate technique that is Miyagi-Do and some that is much more like the spirituality of Miyagi-Do, but not necessarily like Mr. Miyagi. And it kind of just grows from there. Like that's really just the tip of the iceberg for that. There's a theme that is often associated with John Kreese that we call the Awake the Snake theme because to us, it's like where Cobra Kai karate was born. It's like the origins of it. And so you you hear that not just with Kreese, but kind of whenever those origins are are lurking and you know maybe someone yeah. knew their snake has been awoken. Um, so we we go from very literal to very abstract. And I would say we got to have like <laughs> at least 30 themes at this point that are in play at all times. Like right. you, you don't go very, like there is a lot of stuff whenever we approach a new season where there are just a ton of new original ideas, but at the same time, you would be hard pressed to find like a chunk of music that is based on nothing. Like the themes are everywhere. It's the DNA is, is all over the place. Like the theme for one dojo might end up being the baseline of some cue. And like, you would never really know unless you're like looking at the notes and being like, hey, I think that's like the wheel technique theme. And like, we love doing that to us. That's like, that's like really kind of like, we always say this is like symphonic hair metal or like symphonic synth wave. And I think like, it's important that that like word symphonic doesn't just mean like, oh, you're using an orchestra, like la di da. It, it's, it's how you're writing. It's that like thematic writing and you can execute it with, with a very broad palette. Mm. Do each of you have a favorite theme on the show? That's mm. a good question. Um, um, I, I, love, first, go. I love the Okinawa, the, the, the stuff we do for Okinawa and, um, you know, Chosen, uh, is is coming back as we know um so we have some just like being able to like we had themes for chosen themes for daniel's trip to okinawa have always been my favorite um i really enjoyed playing with those 
One of my favorite themes in season four specifically is what we did with uh, Samantha LaRusso's theme, um, which w w is kind of like, you know, we planted those seeds back in season one and we didn't even kind of know how the character was going to develop. And so I feel like we've really been learning what to do with that material as like Sam's arc like plays out. And she was such a huge part of season four and just kind of her, you know, flirting with the different karate styles and embracing both of them and really finding who she was. And so I think that was that was a highlight this season thematically for sure. Mm. What was the most challenging sort of scene or moment in season four to score? All the, entire, the entire the entire last tournament. two episodes, yeah. which are that, that, I like, mean, we, episode we, nine and ten are wall to wall music, yeah. and the whole thing is a karate tournament. Um, yeah. And the only time the score stops is when there's a Carrie Underwood song that we produced, also. So, <laughs> so it's just nonstop music. We had to um, Leo. Leo and I got kind of our start in movies. We worked for a composer named Chris Beck for a long time. And I think we learned a lot about um, like scoring movies is quite different than scoring television. And Cobra Kai is a very unique case where those two episodes, nine and 10 of season four are a movie essentially. And we approached it like a movie. And I think the hardest thing about it is kind of, is the pacing and not and making sure that the score doesn't fatigue the listener that it's like constantly providing excitement um and elevation and our biggest challenge was to like look at these different like fights and and treat them as different cells um that each had their kind of own personality the same way that the fights have different martial arts styles or you know have different personalities through their what's on screen that was really like our challenge and not, not just finding these separate kind of like their own personalities, but, but elevating and, and every step is one step higher, one step higher, one step higher and, and culminating that in the, in the big girls finale. Mm. Yeah. I, I can imagine too, like with an episode or a couple of episodes that are just so music heavy and where it's just a lot of big music that sort of transitioning between different things could be tricky, like going from montage to music in the background of a conversation to a Carrie Underwood song that you're producing and sort of getting those gear changes, right? Is like, yeah. How, how, yeah. We spend, we spend a lot of time working on the flow and the transitions between cues. And we frequently will finish cues and then go back and revise them to make sure that, the flow between them is perfect once we kind of have a couple more puzzle pieces in place. Um, that's really common with us. And a, a lot of the episodes in Cobra Kai really are wall to wall uh, often, but those, those tournament ones, especially. And so it's, it's something we've, you know, we've kind of honed our, our craft on making that flow. But like Zach said, it's very much the, the movie treatment of you just, you want to always keep the audience in it. So the flow is so important. Mm. what do each of you think is special about this show Cobra Kai uh, Zach um you know I I often say I often say I'll say what's special for us maybe um mm. I often say that uh you as a composer like you don't often get to write in in a voice that our job is not necessarily like to create art our job is to provide music for a director and producers and um it is not all that it's not so often that you get to write music that really feels like your voice um and we get to do that every day we work on Cobra Kai and we're so grateful to work with John Josh and Hayden who we immediately on day one clicked with and we were so aligned with so that's another benefit it's just like so awesome to to work with really creative people who have a vision and everyone I think on the show feels that that way they feel that connection like we're working on something really really cool and then it's awesome to just see it be so successful on Netflix um and it was successful on YouTube too but obviously Netflix took it to a whole new level and I think it's just a really special thing seeing like kids wear Cobra Kai t-shirts at the airport 
uh, and you know, and like just fan like, art. There's so much fan and art. fan art, and like and, and like or or watching or watching a football game, and then someone has a Cobra Kai says a Cobra Kai reference, like on the sports cast. Like I think it's just very special to us that we're a part of like just a small part of this like kind of cultural touch and here. like people people like post covers of our score all the time yeah on social media and like that's awesome like that's so cool like you i don't know there's like there's there's shows with fans and then there's like shows with fandom and like that list is a lot shorter and it's really just kind of like marvel star wars <laughs> and Cobra Kai. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like that when you first say that, you're like, wow, that's freaking insane that like that like those things are are all in the same category, but they really are and it's you know, there's there's something about the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai and the, the you know, this amazingly kind of genius interpretation of it that John Josh and Hayden have done where there's something for everyone and I'm always really like moved when I just like look on social media and see people like talking about Cobra Kai and, and how they connect with it either because like, you know, of like the, the kind of like bullying angle or like the teen romance angle or just like the guys wishing for their glory days angle or the people who just like karate angle. Like there's, it's kind of, it, it's rare that you can really hit a little something for everyone and, and everyone gets on board and, that's just really cool. I think we're, I'm, I'm like, I feel really lucky to be a part of it. Mm. Do each of you have a favorite moment from the series? It doesn't have to be a music moment, just like your favorite scene or thing that happens like in the show. Hmm. Can be from You stumped us. Season. You clearly stumped yeah. us. <laughs> Can I'm be from any season. Like, it's very, it's very often that like Leo and I are working and we just get super jacked up and like FaceTime each other. So I'm trying to think of like a moment where I like pick up the phone and I'm like, I would say, oh, I mean, a really good one is, is in season four at the opening of the tournament, which is this track we wrote called It's Karate Time. And it's kind of like the theme of the tournament. And it's just this like super 80s, prog rock montage that like has everything in it and it's got like trumpets and huge orchestra and like synths galore and like amazing pan flutes and it would kind of like it was really just this big thesis statement for us to write um kind of culminating like everything we had like learned up to that point to then launch us into the to the next phase and I think that that like everything about that scene, not just the music is like awesome. Like it just works so well. And it's so yeah. like brilliantly self-aware in, in it's like, I don't know, 80s awesomeness. <laughs> if you're ever watching the show and you're like, wow, the music like really just hit hard there. That's generally a part where Mio and I got really excited about something. Yeah. Like I'm thinking season four, like I'll just stick to season four, but like Sam getting into her kata pose is one of my, during her fight is like one of my all time favorites. And you just hear this like flute playing her theme and it is so epic and it locks so into her mind. And like, I think about, um, I think about one, this is like so, such a random part, but it's how much, it shows how much fun we have on this show. Terry Silver sitting in front of a fish tank and for some reason, Leo and I just like, we're like, okay, this, we have to play this as big as possible. It's like an evil villain sitting in front of a giant fish tank. And you'll carry yeah, like a bomb. Like, they're, like, they're like talking like at a normal volume. And meanwhile, the brass is just like honking and like blaring. And for some reason, everyone was like, yeah, that's good. But like someone out there is probably like, calm down. <laughs> but it makes it, like, it is, makes the... it work so well. Exactly. Like it's like, Cause it just forces you to buy in to like the absurdity. Like it's so absurd that it's normal. Yes, and that's like exactly. what, like that's exactly. how you, that's how the show works. Yeah. And most other shows that would not work. Like yeah, that, someone you know, would, like, someone yeah. would tell us to like tone it down and it would be a loss for the, for the show. Cause yeah. then it would <laughs> yeah. be like, like, I don't know. I just really think when you are, scoring stuff you gotta really buy into your own concepts and like the all the best scores are where everyone buys in you know like mm, not to yes. be not to make like the ultimate cliche like film music comment but like think about psycho okay like 
even the director didn't buy in there and then he bought in once he was like oh okay we're going all the way with like the stabbing like yeah it's just how like i don't know scores that like when when i hear a score that i don't think is very good it's usually because it feels like everyone was a little unsure and so they watered it down until it's not really a concept i'd rather have like a big swing and you know you either hit a home run or maybe you just hit a monster foul ball but like i'm down yeah. with both Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Well, Zach and Leo, thank you so much for spending time talking to us today. All the best of luck with the big Emmy tournament that's coming up later in the year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, get... we're actually going to, we're going to be fighting in that tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to make your awards predictions. I uh, really appreciate you giving up the time today, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.